Hey there, creepy peeps. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome back. If you are returning, it's that time again to go over everything I watched in the previous month, in March. Okay, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So the very first thing that I have logged on my letterbox is actually Dracula, because I finished watching it. I watched the third episode on the first. So technically I started it in February, I finished it in March. Um, yeah, I actually liked it. I know a lot of people, at least from what I saw on the internet, were talking about the third <laughs> episode of the miniseries and everybody liking it up until the third one, but I actually enjoyed it. I don't know, I liked it. I thought it was a unique spin on Dracula and I didn't mind the, the like modern, take in the <laughs> in the third episode and I didn't mind the ending either so I don't know I liked it and I'll have to like read into people's reviews more to see like specifically what they didn't like but I was fine with it and then I watched After Midnight which I did a whole review on separately so you can go back on my channel and watch that if you want to it was a mumble gore monster movie kind of slow burn but if you like that sort of thing definitely recommend it and then of course we have Friday the 13th on here because Safety Maven did a safety audit of Friday the 13th. I will link that up here if you want to check that out. And then I watched Space Jam because it's Space Jam. I don't know. I saw it was on Netflix. Haven't seen that movie in forever and I forgot how much of a like if movies could be a bop. I know that's a thing that you you say about songs but like this movie would be one. <laughs> Maybe because it's full of bops. Well, I think the movie is a bop. Does that make sense? But it's Space Jam. I don't need to explain why I watched Space Jam. That should be obvious. <laughs> and then I watched Scream 2, which it's Scream. Yet another thing I don't really have to explain. Um, sorry, we're just rocketing through these movies. Take a little stop here because I watched The Lift for one of my patrons, I've talked about this many times, um, one of my patrons is Will creates a horror movie challenge every year. This is for his 2020 movie challenge. It'll be linked in the description. So the, this week in March, this first week in March was, I'm gonna say this wrong, hold on, I have it written down, Lage London week? <laughs> I tried my best. Um, or Belgian horror week. Um, and I saw that, Azul had suggested that one, I think, in his uh, challenge. So I watched it. Basically, it's a hyper-intelligent elevator system that kills people. You know, pretty straightforward. I thought it was okay. I gave it a two and a half. I was like right down the middle of the road on this one. I thought the, <laughs> the like killer elevator thing was like, it was the perfect balance of like silly and actually kind of terrifying because there are certain instances where elevators can actually be terrifying in real life. <laughs> I just didn't like our main character though. I just, to me, he wasn't that likable of a character. And I feel like things just kind of happened to him for the sake of like drama and conflict, like his wife leaving him in the movie kind of, not completely out of nowhere, but I felt like her leaving him when she did in the movie was kind of an overreaction to what was happening. Um, and I feel like it was just there to like have conflict and it didn't really add anything to the movie. Like it could have not happened and the movie would have been the same. <laughs> I don't know, I thought that one was okay. And then I watched The Crazies because I did it. I, uh, I did a video about five like virus horror movies. I'll link it up here if you haven't watched it. And The Crazies was one of them. That's one of my favorite. Like when it comes to like virus, like quarantining disease type movies, The Crazies is my favorite. Uh, and since I was talking about it so much in that video, I really wanted to watch it, so. <laughs> and then I watched The Raven, which was also for Azul's movie challenge for Edgar Allan Poe week. I love that there was an Edgar Allan Poe week. Um, <laughs> I feel like at this point I've, seen almost every single like adaptation of one of Poe's stories that I can see. So I decided to watch The Raven, which isn't necessarily based on any Poe story in particular. Um, 
It's a fictionalized account of the last few days of Edgar Allan Poe's life in which the poet is in pursuit of a serial killer whose murders mirror those in the writer's stories. So it was kind of just like a fun nod <laughs> to Edgar Allan Poe. Um, if you're a fan of his stories and his poems, I would definitely recommend watching it if you haven't because there's a lot of not only just like the murders that are nods to his stories, there's a whole lot of other stuff within the movie. So if you're a fan of his, you'll be able to pick up on a lot of things. So it's kind of fun in that way. And I feel like they did a good job of kind of working in almost all of the details of mysterious details of Edgar Allan Poe's last days into the narrative. So it almost gives you a complete explanation of why he was on a park bench and delirious, why he was saying Reynolds, that sort of thing. They kind of give you a reason within the movie for all that. The only thing they did not manage to work in though is why he was in somebody else's clothes. And then I watched The Evil Dead for a movie night with my patrons. I recently added an extra movie night. So if you join my patron at the top tier, the $6 tier, we have two movie nights a month. So if anybody's interested, um, or if you just want to for like the next month or, <laughs> or something while we're all uh, staying at home. Um, so we watched The Evil Dead. It was fun. And that was the first time I've actually watched that movie in a group setting. And I mean, that movie is like fun and kind of silly anyway, but I feel like it was amplified with a group. So I really, really liked watching that with a group. And then the next two movies that you can see were Pelts and the Farm, which I watched for Does This Offend You? Uh, this past month it was on Emma's channel. I'll link that video up here, wherever it pops up. Um, <laughs> so you can watch that if you haven't seen that episode yet. Um, if you can't kind of tell the theme, the rough theme was like animal rights. I mean, if you've watched any episode of Does This Avenge You, you know we set the theme and we kind of go off on tangents away from that theme. But yeah, so I mean, I had a, ni I had a nice little rant in it. Emma, I, Emma actually ranted in that one a little bit too. We both got on our soapbox. So if you like either of us ranting, this episode is going to be a treat for you because we both rant. <laughs> mm, and then I watched Zombie Flesh Eaters. <laughs> Ephraim is out here trying to stir up controversy. Okay. <laughs> also, one of my patron perks is you can request movies of me to watch each month and I talk about them in these videos like I'm doing right now. Um, and Ephraim suggested zombie flesh eaters. <laughs> so this is going to be something like if you've been on this channel for a long time, you know. Uh, <laughs> This is on, this movie is on my personal like blacklist of movies that I just don't talk about because the last time I talked about it was, it, I did a review on this forever ago now um, and I didn't love it and I got some of the worst hate comments <laughs> that I've ever gotten in my five years, five years? however many years on YouTube um, because I did not love this movie and give it five stars. So it's just a movie I don't ever talk about because yeah. Um, so this is the first time I've watched it since that first time that I watched it to review it. Um, <laughs> I still didn't love it. Also, if you've been on this channel for a while, I say this every time and this movie is the reason um, why I always give this disclaimer that I don't really like Giallo horror movies. I know my Italian ancestors hate me, but <laughs> I, it's just not for me and that's okay. I will say that I liked it slightly better than the first time, but it's just like a movie like, I don't know what it is, but it bores the fuck out of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know there'll be like moments that I look up in the movie. It's particularly like when some, like when it's a kill, that's kind of when I pay attention, but literally the rest of the movie, I couldn't care less. 
Then I watched Tokyo Gore Police, which was for Azul's movie challenge for Japan Week. Is that what it was? Japan Cinema Week. So this is set in a future world vision of Tokyo where the police have been privatized and self-mutilation is casual and encouraged. We follow Ruka, who is an officer specializing in destroying homicidal mutants known as engineers who can transform any injury into a weapon. <laughs> a lot's going on in this movie. Um, don't let my two and a half star rating fool you as soon as this movie really got in to the action and it jumps right in. This is gonna be like House where, you know, I don't immediately love it the first time I see it because it's a lot to take in. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's a lot to process, a, you know, a lot's going on in that movie. Um, so it's kind of a whirlwind. As I watch it more and more, I can tell it's gonna be one of those movies that I really, really like. <laughs> and then I watched Stargirl. <laughs> um, I, it was on Disney Plus, and I remember my teacher, it must have been sophomore year, because it was Miss Fulham, the fact that I remember that. Um, <laughs> I love Miss Fulham, that's why. She read us this book. It's it's quite a short novel. And it was just one of those to like kill time or something, I think, before like summer break when there was really nothing going on. She was like reading us this book in class. And yeah, it was a nice memory. And <laughs> Disney Plus made this movie, made it into a movie. So if you've read the book, highly recommend the movie. It's super cute. And it definitely stays true to the theme of <laughs> of star girl then back to horror i watched them that follow actually this is more of a drama thriller but close enough this follows a pentecostal pastor and his church who handle venomous snakes to prove themselves before god the pastor's daughter mara holds a secret her romantic past with non-believer augie which causes conflict for mara's upcoming wedding to a devoted member of the church so like i said this isn't really a horror movie it's like a drama thriller type thing but it's definitely scary especially terrifying for those of us that don't really like organized religion <laughs> and it's probably a little extra scary if you're a woman also it was it was really good it was really compelling it's a story that draws you in right away the only reason i didn't rate it higher than it is is because the ending it's definitely more of a slow burn movie um so everything builds quite slowly and it it doesn't not have an exciting ending. It's that like falling action, that resolution. It just kind of like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the, just to me, the ending isn't what I wanted it to be. Don't ask me what I would have preferred it to be. I don't know, but I was for whatever reason, just a little bit let down by the, the very, very end. So yeah, that's all. It, the, overall though, was not a bad movie. And then I watched The Ninth Gate, which was requested of me by Ben. The movie follows a rare book dealer who is hired to validate the authenticity of a book that is supposedly written by the devil himself. I feel like this was like a demonic Da Vinci code. <laughs> and it was also okay. I feel like kind of like them that follow this one kind of just like fizzled out a little bit. I guess it's because, okay, it didn't quite fizzle out in the same way, but I feel like um, our main character, Corso, I mean, he's not that likable of a character to begin with. And I mean, they do establish that he's pretty greedy, but I feel like within the movie, there's a point where he kind of like flips, where he's less interested in just like doing his job for his, for his client that he is doing this for. And he becomes, you know, he wants the power that the devil will give him if he goes through the nine gates or whatever uh <laughs> so like there's a point in the movie where you know he kind of like flips and it becomes purse like it becomes a greed to think for him and less of him doing a job um I feel like that point in the movie you don't really know when that happens and then all of a sudden he's kind of just like well I want the power and you're kind of like oh wait what <laughs> and this is like quite towards the end and yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I think it just has to do with like he's a one dimensional character. I think. I think if he was a bit deeper of a character, I would have liked it more. I think it was a character thing. 
Um, and then I watched The House by the Cemetery, which was requested by Kevin. Uh, this is kind of your typical haunted house movie. A family moves in from the city. The house has a dark past, which results in scary shit happening. Look at me watching two Lucio Fulci movies in one month. And neither of them <laughs> were by my own doing. They were both requested. <laughs> I didn't hate this one. I thought it was okay. Um, I like a good haunted house movie. This one's pretty standard. I think what sets it apart from maybe other movies of this subgenre is the gore effects, which I'm coming to realize I think that's why a lot of people really like Lucio Fulci movies. Not that I've seen every single one, so I don't actually know. I'm just guessing. Because <laughs> like the narrative and the the characters are not all that unique or special. But I definitely noticed like the gore and the deaths, you know, setting this movie apart from other haunted house movies. So maybe that's the route I need to go from now on when it comes to like Italian filmmakers. <laughs> And then I watched Alice Sweet Alice, which was for Slasher Week of Azul's movie challenge. This movie follows a family that is just friggin racked with tragedy after one of the daughters is brutally murdered during her first communion and the police suspect her sister Alice is to blame. This one has been on my watch list for ages, so I'm glad I finally watched it. <laughs> as soon as I saw Slasher Week, I was like, we gotta watch this one. <laughs> It's creepy and it's eerie the whole time. You can definitely tell something is wrong with Alice, whether you believe she is the killer or not. Um, the only thing I will say, I was kind of disappointed they like revealed slash confirmed who the killer was quite early on in the movie. I mean, not right away, but it's like definitely at the halfway point. And I was kind of disappointed by that. I don't know. I wish, I mean, there is a slight twist at the very, very end that kind of like throws that, throws that revelation into question by the end. So it's not like they just reveal it halfway and then it's, that's how it is the rest of the movie. But I don't know. I wish they had kind of just kept the mystery up just a little bit longer. That's really it. Um, other than that, I actually quite liked it. And then I watched Detroit Rock City on the 26th because, well, if you <laughs> tuned into my live stream fail on the 25th, um, yeah, I needed something fun to watch the next day. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to watch something that I really, really like and always makes me smile. And Detroit Rock City is one of those movies. So I just, I watched it. And then I watched Murder Party. That was also for a movie night with my patrons. This is directed by the same person who directed Green Room. And it's definitely like a lower budget indie horror movie. It's on Netflix. That's where we watched it if you're interested at all in this. Um, and it was hilarious. <laughs> um, definitely lots of dry humor. I think one of my patrons mentioned this too. Like, they didn't think it would be as funny if they had watched it by themselves. So like in a group setting, you know, it ended up being a little bit funnier. Um, so I would highly recommend this one if like you and your friends are getting together to watch something virtually because of, you know, COVID-19. Um, definitely check out Murder Party. I think it's best viewed in a group setting. And then I had a double feature night. I watched Grave Encounters and Grave Encounters 2. I just talked about those in my 2B recommendations video. Um, <laughs> I know a few people were commenting on that video that they don't like Grave Encounters that much and that's fine. That's why I tried to recommend a whole bunch of different things in that video because not everybody's gonna like everything obviously because we're all different and that's fine. Um, I don't know. I just think those movies are kind of silly and fun for what they are. They're not cinematic masterpieces by any means. And then I watched Deathgasm because I also recently talked about that movie. I just find like the, the movies that I've been talking about for like recommendations and stuff, it makes me want to watch them again because I haven't watched them in a while. Um, so I watched Deathgasm because fuck it, it's Deathgasm. It's awesome. And then finally to end out the month, I watched Beetlejuice because it was the anniversary of the premiere of that movie on March 30th. So of course, you gotta watch Beetlejuice. Um, and there's a little sneak peek of <laughs> my April watches right there. But So that's everything I watched in March. This video is long enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it. Um, let me know the stuff you've been watching the past month and what you plan on watching. If you have anything on like your quarantine watch list this next month while we're all still stuck at home. 
I would also really quick like to thank my patrons for requesting all of those movies for me to watch and for supporting my channel. Thank you guys so, so much. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link in the description. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you're new here or you've been lurking, subscribe, become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. And until then, stay strange. Bye.